Hey folks, Steve here. Just a quick video and just to say hey, kudos to the passive restraint system developed by uh, Ron Polk and others in that I don't have to, I'm not tying anything down, I'm not using bungees, I don't have locks, I don't have pins, I don't have anything. When I drive down the road with this trailer, unless the roads are like super bad or I'm just being an idiot, that things don't move, things don't fall out, things don't, they just don't move. And so kudos to that passive restraint system. Passive meaning you can go in, grab the tool, you don't have to unlock or unbar or unchain or undo anything, you just grab the tool and go. I do have a little bit of active restraint. I guess that would be the opposite of passive, the active restraint. One is right up there with my track saw track, the longest track. It's the only place in this trailer I can actually store that thing. And it has little locking clamps. And so I have to unlock that in order to lower that. And then this bar right here, oh boy, it's hard to do this backwards. This bar right here, I actually have two screws, one there, one down there, that I can screw it in for traveling. But in truth, I haven't screwed that thing in in an age and a day you know it's been a long time it'll actually ride just like that and what it does is it supports because this is basically a two-sided cabinet but yet I have a shelf in it so that shelf is actually only pinned on two sides but yet it is supporting a 60 pound miter saw and that's not much less weight and so I you know swapping them out doesn't really matter and so to protect that shelf from breaking and this actually sags a bit up here too I actually just put this uh, this uh, post in, and that post rides just fine. I, I used to put the screws in and take the screws out every time, and in truth, I haven't done the screws in, in a long time. Matter of fact, someone will come in, I'm, I'm sitting in the trailer, or standing in the trailer doing something, and you know, someone will come up, hey Spence, what's going on? They'll grab onto this bar and use it like a support, right? You know, So you, instead of leaning on it though, they pull on it, and it actually just comes right down. Like, whoa, what the hell? Sorry, dude. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you know, so that's technically active because I do have to remove that in order to get both of those saws out comfortably. But I actually don't screw it in, so it's literally just setting it off to the side. Um, by the way, you see a couple of tools out, and that's simply because I'm charging batteries, and, the, and two of those batteries will go on there on those two tools or two impact drivers because I my tools are all the 20 volt tools that I own because I'm, I'm dual. They all actually are stored with batteries on them. They've designed the tools in such a way, at least what I have found, where even with the batteries on the tools, they're not discharging the batteries at all. So they can sit in there, you know, my power plane, I don't know if I use it, you know, once every three weeks. So the battery sits on it. When I pull it out, get ready to go, three bars, you know, I'm not having a problem with any of the discharge. I can leave tools on, so I store all of my 20 volts with their, with their batteries. I do not have enough of my 60 volt flex batteries to actually set on every one of my 60 volt flex tools. And so I'm like three or three batteries shy or, or something, and those batteries are very expensive. And so eventually a goal is, yeah, I would like to have uh, two or three more 9 amp hour, maybe throw in a 12 amp hour or a six, maybe a... 6, 9, 12 combination. But other than that, I just keep the 60 volts sitting on my battery shelf where I keep all my charged batteries. But the one battery that does live on a tool all the time would be, well, two. One is my track saw. It always has the six amp hour. I think that's what I bought when I got the tool because I did all that a la carte. And also my 60 volt flex blower also keeps a battery on that. And because that's something I do grab almost daily if I'm on a job site to you know clean things off if we're outside. That, that uh, tool lives there. But otherwise, my other two 60 volt batteries just live on the battery shelf. And when I need them, I need them. And right now, I think one or two of them are actually charging. All right, well, hey folks, that's all I've got for today. Thank you very much for uh, sticking with me. If you like the video, please click the like. If you want to subscribe, great. I'm shooting for a million and I think I've got a thousand. So I'm only 999,000 away from that million mark and you can make that happen. <laughs> so with that being said, and, and please, I guess, uh, share. Uh, I'd never even thought about it, but you, if you like this video, if you find somebody else in your life that, man, you gotta, you gotta check this idiot out, this, this goofball. Just watch him and laugh. Drink a beer and laugh, okay? Watch him backwards and laugh. You know, maybe he'll sing a Beatles song or something. Share it. That would be great, too, because I don't think I've ever had anybody share a video uh, of mine before, and probably for good reason. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I had a good time anyway. It's, the, it's my one guilty pleasure uh, because I don't watch uh, Dr. Sexy uh, or any of those other shows, right? Uh, Supernatural. All right, hey, talk to you all later, folks. Thanks.